Recht herzlichen Dank. Um, es freut mich sehr. It's, it's wonderful to have the chance to listen and observe and question and learn from the eight amazing presentations we heard this morning. I know that I stand between you and the announcement of the results, so I don't want to um, overextend my welcome. But I wanted to just speak a bit about, uh, you'll see that, that even the title Data Science for All mirrors some of the impulses, in, in this case from, from Hildesheim, that are motivating you. And I wanted to give you a taste of what the future might bring for you as you unfold this new, and I'll suggest democratic, spirit in bringing data, data literacy, and data science to students across the Hochschulen, across the universities, the Fachhochschulen, and all of the institutions represented here. There is no royal road to data literacy or data science in the universities around the world today. And that is right. That is, that is the way it should be. Because there is no single right way to do, to take on the task in front of all of us, to meet the societal and the individual needs for understanding and orientation and competence in appropriating and using and deploying data in all of the different realms where our students need to have that from us. I'll be reflecting on our experience at Berkeley as a way for opening up some ways of thinking that may be um, useful for you and for others in this area. Not because Berkeley has the right way to do it, but because Berkeley has invested very extensively hard and fast in this area. And I want to give you a sense of the, both the excitement that goes with this area and the challenges that come with it at the institutional level and the promise for democratization, a theme I'll come back to, of making data literacy and data science as desired available to students at every level. So at Berkeley, I want to give you a sense of the things that we've been experiencing, in part by showing you the first day of class this fall in our Foundations of Data Science class. 1,600 students this semester wanted to take a class that we call Data 8. We only had seats for 1,300 because we are limited by classroom space, because we are limited by the ability to field the, the student instructors who do much of the teaching for this class. This um, Data 8 class, Foundations of Data Science, is the beginning of a program that is meant to transform student experience across the university, eventually, we hope, reaching the entire spectrum of all fields and all the entire student body. If 1,600 students is what we can do in a semester, that roughly gets us to a third of Berkeley's uh, student cohort. We want to be able to take it to all of them. And yet, without making it a requirement, without making it something imposed on the students, but something that they desire and seek out for themselves and want to bring to bear. Starting from their own interest, so evident in the fact that they will crowd into, this is not even a lecture hall on campus. This, this is the um, concert hall where we meet for the first week of class until we switch into a more, let's say, um, it's essentially a combination of a MOOC and an in-presence in meeting because the students at some point say, I get much more out of coming to the laboratories and doing the work in smaller groups than in these massive, um, massive meetings together. So I'm going to start from this experience of the students. 
who come to this class because they love it, because they tell each other on, on the public bus outside of the classroom, you must take data aid. You don't know why yet, but you must take it. They, they, the viral sensation of this class has drawn into data science um, the, the, the sense of its availability to and its power to, for students all across the spectrum. And then I'll open up some of the surrounding parts of the program that we've built around this starting point and speak about the transformation of curricula in every part of the university that is made possible by having a common basis in data literacy and a foundation that many, many different programs can build on. So Berkeley, four years ago, gave itself a charge. Gave itself, I mean, coming from the faculty, moving up to the administration, and coming back down to the faculty. To rethink at a fundamental level what every educated person must know about quantitative reasoning in this modern era. How to effectively understand process and interpret information to inform decisions in their professional and personal lives and as citizens in the world in the 21st century. The data science education rapid action team, as it was called, was given this charge in the summer of 2014 to imagine what a curriculum might be that would bring not only the basics of data literacy to as many students as we could plausibly reach, but also provide the foundation for building on top of it an entire set of opportunities for students to advance further, whether they wanted to become, as we say in the US, majors in data science, or to carry the learnings that they gained at this introductory level into every other pathway of study, whether it be in physics or environmental science or the humanities. This was the charge that was given to a faculty team that I had the honor to co-lead. As mentioned, I'm a historian, a historian of science and technology. My original training was in theoretical physics, and I spend much of my time now at Berkeley coordinating and translating and explaining to people across the university how their mutual needs can be met by working together. Because an effort of this scale, of data literacy, as you're all considering it, only happens as a collective project. It needs strong coordination and collaboration across disciplines, and it also needs the willingness to stay with your colleagues and work with them through the difficult questions. What is actually essential for our students? What if we disagree? Where do we find common ground? So to say a bit more, first of all, about the foundations of data science, data eight class. This is a course that is offered to students of every part of the university with no prerequisites other than admission to Berkeley. No calculus, no linear algebra, no previous computing experience. We require what we call high school algebra. And the um, course is a standard um, four unit offering taught in the largest lecture hall on campus, plus roughly 40 student laboratories with 25 to 30 students in each. It is jointly taught between computer science and statistics and is designed to pull students in through working with data that they can care about. This being Berkeley, we choose many examples from the world of environment and society and politics in order to grab students from every part of the disciplinary spectrum. Because even technical students care about the world around them. And being able to speak about poverty or income inequality or access to safe drinking water is something that attracts and draws in students from every area. In order to do this with the ambitions that we have, we've had to invest very heavily in building a computational platform that we hope will make it possible for others to also teach at this scale. 
all of the materials are online and in order to be able to serve 1300 students in a lecture hall at one time all computing in Jupyter notebooks on their laptops or even their smartphones we've had to build up an underlying infrastructure that those of you who are in the informatic field might find interesting on its own We've made this available now on the edX platform as a MOOC um, for free. We will be opening it up for self-paced um, groups to make use of in other universities starting roughly in, in January. And in the edX offering that we did over the summer as a kind of pilot, German German representatives, German students, were in the top 10 in the groups that um, registered their, their national origins. Some of your students are probably exposed to data aid already. We're particularly proud that the gender distribution in this class roughly matches that of the university as a whole. The one place where it may not match is in fact that probably more than 1% of our students self-identify as not binary in gender. So the, the sort of breadth of student interest is represented on demographics, also on majors, areas of study, um, technical and non-technical majors here at the same time. So imagine what it might be like in your own institution to be realizing the dreams that you have of reaching out to students at such a broad range and knowing that it's possible. It's not necessary to do it the Berkeley way, but it is possible to have the kinds of ambitions that are represented among the proposals here, to reach out to areas that are not data intensive at present, but you know will be in the future, making it possible for students to gain experience working on real world problems that engage them, working with actual data sets knowing that it can be done without having extraordinary previous preparation, but investing in the teaching infrastructure and the willingness of your, of your faculty to guide it. Now alongside of Data8, um, whose, whose details as an introduction to computational inferential thinking you can find in its textbook, um, we also have developed a set of courses that go around it that reflect, in fact, this, this tension, the Spannung that some of you have articulated about data literacy being anchored in particular disciplines, particular domains, versus being provided as a common platform. So if you accept that students come in without a previous desire to study this subject, in fact may have prejudices against it to start, and then understand the value of giving them both hands-on experience and a deep conceptual foundation. What happens to statistics when it's merged with computing? What happens to computing when it's taught through real-world problems? then you can see the attraction of developing courses around it that leverage it and connect to it. In Berkeley, we've tried doing this at the same level with no prerequisites as the foundations of data science with what we've called connector courses, which are classes that are offered by faculty in domains across campus from cognitive science to geography to legal studies to molecular and cell biology, where faculty have invested their own time in developing classes that connect to the foundations course. I see these same impulses in what each of you have put forward as your proposals, and I find that so inspiring, the chance to bring other participants in, other disciplines, and make them part of your project. It's been stunning to me that roughly 30 new courses in the connector area have been developed in the three years that we've been at this. None of it provided by any institutional resources, but by faculty knowing that this was the most important new course that they could develop, both for their students and out of their own interest, to learn how to try to teach in this new data-saturated era. The molecular and cell biology connector on immunotherapy of cancer 
was developed by an extraordinary distinguished molecular biology who had never done data before. And he used the opportunity of working in this program to took, take his sabbatical and develop a new course that would give him value as well. Now building on this foundation, we're about to offer what will, we're almost afraid to say, will become one of the largest undergraduate programs of study at the university just from the very start. We're developing a data science major that we intend will prepare students to go on in the different disciplines of science that will become data driven, as well as go out into the real world with data analytic skills, where they'll be able to combine technical skills in computing and statistics and mathematics with a broad anchoring in a particular area of study, as well as a deep deep setting in the human context and the ethics of data. So to give a sense of the appeal of the domain emphases, the particular areas of study, I've just listed a few of these here, from neuroscience to cognition to ecology. Much of the attraction into this major is its ability to provide value for so many other domains of study. The students don't want to learn data science for its own sake. They want to put it to work on problems that they care about, understanding the human brain or improving fisheries quality. We are also developing a whole set of new courses on the ethics of data and more broadly its contextualization in the society that we're now living in as it's being datafied. These are coming from humanists and social scientists all across campus in the School of Information or you see down on the left a history course. It happens to be the one I co-teach now, where you take the perspective of a historian of 20th century physics trained during the era of the Cold War and its experience with the good and the evil that science can advance intentionally or not, bringing it to bear on this datafied world. And finally, I wanted to seed the thought with you that even outside a formal, regular, structured curriculum, there are so many opportunities to use, the opportun to use the possibilities opened up by data in existing courses. As your students come through with the data literacy that you intend to provide them, imagine what they can do in transforming curricula in other fields of study. This has been an area in which our students have led the way rather than our professors. Because in domains from rhetoric to English to psychology, we find that even Berkeley professors don't have the data analytic skills that this new world of data-driven scholarship is going to require. And so we found students are willing to go in and work hand in hand on a peer basis with distinguished faculty in order to transform classes across the university. So some of these examples bring us back to the theme of democratization. Because the power of data to make difference in the social world comes as much from its embedding all across the curricula in classes like a standard junior level sociology course on social inequality where students now, whether they intend to study data science or not, can bring the experience of working in data science areas and tools into the existing classes and the existing projects that they find compelling to themselves. Looking at geographic dispersions of income or understanding how poverty relates to other socioeconomic, socioeconomic factors. So all of this work is done by, it's essentially a startup. So much at Berkeley starts from the bottom up, like I'm seeing in many of your institutions. It starts from faculty and students coming together to do something at scale in a way that brings the experience of data literacy and building on top of it of data science all across the curriculum. This has been one of the most exciting things I've experienced at UC Berkeley. I've put four years of my life into it 
together with this great team of collaborators. And just like so many of your initiatives are coming both from the bottom up and the top down, we're seeing that that is the strategy to build something that both reaches across the university and can persist and stabilize. So I'm happy to answer questions about this you know, particular instantiation of data literacy. The Berkeley version has been data science for all, but of course you need not do it that way. It's just an example of the kind of institutional innovation and experimentation that I see this program being, being opened up that you're going to be part of. And I hope that we can continue to be helpful to the Stifterverband and the heinz nixdorf Stiftung as you go further. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Thank Carson. Um, we now have time for some questions. Uh, and I think that the link is very important. Also, the link is very wichtig for you. Um, jetzt ist der Moment, um ein paar Fragen zu stellen. Uh, meine erste Frage ist eine ganz triviale. Um, der Kurs heißt Data Aid. Ich habe äh, bei mehreren anderen Kursen, die Sie gesehen haben, habe ich die Zahl 88 gesehen. Später sogar 188. What's with the eight? Um, pure chance. Um, we went back and forth. Should it be called Data 10, which is what eight in octal, or Data 8, because that was the one number that no existing course had claimed across the curriculum? <laughs> Um, so sheer chance, and then once you got the eight theme, then you run with it, and you do eighty-eight and one eighty-eight. All right. Uh, okay. So it's 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 just uh, it's just an administrative thing. It, that's all it is. Okay. Fair you, enough. You can give it some significance and tell me why we. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it is it is the the, the sign of infinity. So in, yeah. in, a, in a sense, it's really beautiful. I'll I'll take that back and use it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, one, one thing that came to my mind, um, this is really significant, what you did, and whenever you change something in a system, uh, normally there are people against it, because when, whenever you, you, you have significant mm -hmm. changes, some people feel threatened. How did you deal with that? No, no one's felt threatened by this. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, partly, it's been successful by leveraging existing needs across campus. So, mm -hmm. roughly 25 majors across campus require statistics of their students. And we have 23 of them saying, this is a better statistics class, so we'll build it into our curricula. I think the thing that is somewhat more threatening is that it is computer science taking over the world. Um, this is one of four classes of introductory computer science at Berkeley that have more than 1,200 students every semester. And so one of the things that has been challenging for the rest of the university to come to grips with is the huge demand that students across the university have to take computer science, which goes along with their not taking other things. So we've done a lot of work to try to not have this seem like the hegemonic rule of computer science. That may be one reason why you have a historian leading the program. But the sense that data literacy and data science is for all is something that lets other, other fields, other, other areas of the university buy in because they get to co-shape it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um we had, while we had the discussion here, while you were making the choice um, of which universities uh, will be, uh, 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 will receive the funding, um, the question came up if, uh, if it's not already too late to uh, start teaching data literacy at university level. I mean, it's obviously better than nothing, but th that this is such a basic skill that it should rather be taught in school. Uh, w would you agree to that? I do believe that is correct, that by the time students get to university, their sense of their futures has already partly been shaped by living in a world full of data. And to be able to accompany them through, especially, I, I think, their high school years, uh, forgive me had, um, mm. how exactly I'd translate that into... High German. school years, yeah. uh, that would be gymnasialjahre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
um, when they're already making choices to guide their own futures before they've settled on a life path. Um, in our case at Berkeley, the other thing that's very important to us is to bring Data 8 to the California Community Colleges because roughly a third of Berkeley graduates don't start as freshmen at Berkeley. They come through, uh, we would say, Niedrigschwellig um, entry point from starting two years in local colleges. And we want to make sure that opportunities to engage in data literacy and data science mm -hmm. are available all the way across the spectrum, not only at elite universities such mm -hmm. as Berkeley. Yeah, that's great. So does, does that mean that uh, I'm, I'm always a proponent of, of, uh, open, uh, of open educational resources. So, is, um, so did you put your materials under an open license or is it just that anybody can use it but it's still proprietary? Um, anybody can use it. We have concerns about um, making, it, making the Data 8 textbook available for people to completely rewrite on their own terms. Because one thing that you can see about data science and data literacy is if you do it badly, you can create huge havoc in the world. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to walk a line between making it openly available and saying, please, or the alternative would be to say, and please go and rewrite it yourself. We're trying to keep a little bit of control there. Okay, fair enough. Um, we, have, we have a lot of questions in by now. Um, so the question that got the most votes, and I'm just reading it uh, mm -hmm. out loud right now, is I'd imagine that one reason that students are so excited about this would be the no prior skills required uh, for a methods course. Does that limit the kind of depth possible to explore the subject? It definitely does. And that's a deliberate choice. That um, this is not the course after which you should go out and pretend to be a data scientist. It is the thing that is supposed to draw you in and make you engaged. That's a term we've heard so many times today. Mm -hmm. And then encourage you to go on and do more. So it's a very, very closely pared down introductory course mm -hmm. with very few equations because the concepts underneath are what we want the students to gain. I think we can pull two of the next questions together, which is um, the size of the support team, but, and, but also the size of the budget that was needed to pull this project off, if I may quote. Yeah. Um, the only thing that scales with the size of students we're serving in the class is the students themselves. So almost all of the teaching assistants for this class are undergraduates as well. Um, sophomores, juniors, and seniors who have taken classes that follow on this. So the size of the teaching staff for the class is one or two professors plus 150 or 200 student teaching staff. And so you, uh, this is Berkeley computer science, right? You, you, you come up with a hierarchical pyramidal structure that allows you to design from the top and implement at the bottom. And so we've taken that structure over not just into the teaching of the Data 8 course, but the actual building up of the division of data sciences. As, as for the cost of it, Yes. The, the cost of running the, the course is significant, but of course that's what universities are set up to do. So that's, that's simply what it is. I have, there's one last question that I would like to ask you, uh, because I know that time's up, uh, but um, if somebody's in the audience here and, and they're very mm -hmm. impressed with what you said, how could they use your work to make, to make something similar happen? in Germany? How can they build on what you do uh, and how can they take it to Germany? We'd, we'd be delighted to be helpful as best we know how. So we're building up an external outreach team mm -hmm. right now. We've started with external outreach to American universities mm -hmm. and we would love to find ways to partner with you. So I, I think right now the um, the only approach I can suggest is send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have it streamlined yet, and I will forward it on to our external outreach team. Thank you very much. Ms. Carson, a big applause, please. Großer Applaus für Frau Carson.